Okay, we are finally ready to get started with module zero. To get started with any of your coursework, you're going to click on the modules button and it will navigate you to the modules page. All the modules are listed on the right hand side. The only thing you have to do is make sure you know which module you should be working on. During the first week of the semester, I want you to complete module zero. You can read through all of the information that's included here. I'm going to skim it, but you should read through it. Uh, the, the bulleted list or the numbered list there is trying to give you a heads up to kind of get a picture of how the semester is going to, to plan out. And so it says the course content has been divided into 13 modules. There's modules 1 through 12, which are our real modules, and then our intro module, I called it module 0. I did that so that the projects tend to line up with the numbers. So project 1 is in module 1, project 2 is in module 2. In the past, we had 13 modules, 1 to 13. And then project 1 was in module 2, and project 2 was in module 3. And it was all sorts of chaos. Each module will be budgeted for between one and two weeks in the semester. I will let you know that the early modules, most of them are two-week modules so that you can get used to using InDesign. Do not get used to them all being two modules at a certain point. They're all one-week modules because you shouldn't have to take as long getting used to like opening the program and saving and packaging and pre-flighting your work, which to some of you that probably seemed like a foreign language that I just said, but after the first module you will understand what that means. Um, every module contains at least one lecture topic. Some contain two or even three. Our books, module 10, pages and books, it's a two week long module that has three lectures inside of it. Um, when you are working on the lectures, there is a slideshow lecture that you can read through and a recorded lecture. I recommend watching the recorded lecture because I will demo, I'll open up InDesign, I'll demo all the things that you have to do. In addition to the modules, um, in addition, each module may include additional things, and they're not always the same. So most of them have a project that's associated with what you're working on. They have a vocabulary quiz that is 15 minutes, and it asks really basic questions that should be easy to answer if you watch the lecture. And then there's a discussion thread. Um, at a certain point in the semester, when the projects start becoming more creative, there'll also be critique activities. There is a 15 minute time limit on the, all the vocabulary quizzes. All work is expected to be turned in on time, but I already talked about my late policy. I think it's pretty generous. You do get docked 10% for being late, but you are allowed to submit late work until the very last day of our semester, which will be Wednesday of finals week. The only exception to that is I do not accept midterm exams late. You will get a zero on that. Um, and then we don't really have a midterm and a final. so approximately week eight is midterm exams week we don't have a midterm exam we have a three quarters of the way through the semester exam and so week 12 or 13 ish will be our midterm exam week and then we don't have a final instead of a final exam we'll do a final project um, I highly recommend printing the semester schedule at a glance page I'm a list maker I like to check things off we will not change any of the due dates and so you don't have to worry about me modifying it and saying oh I'm pushing this up or I'm gonna move that activity back a week etc once you've read through everything that has been written in module 0 I would like you to complete all the required activities and all the required submissions this is where it helps to navigate through the course properly you need to read all of these things on the left even though they have no weight for your grade in order for the things on the right to be easier to submit and so there's a getting started page which is everything I'm talking about in these videos so you can skim through it if you're watching these videos in detail. There are guidelines for taking online courses and setting realistic expectations. If you've taken any other online course from me, these pages look familiar and that's okay. Um, but it's important to me that everyone taking an online class really understand what that means. Um, an online class is different from on campus and neither is good or bad or right or wrong. They're just different and so it's really important for you to accept that they're different at the beginning of the semester than to wait till the end. I, every once in a while I have a student that just gets really upset if they email me at like 11.30 at night and I don't respond like 30 seconds after they email me because how could he or she be able to do their coursework if they get stuck and they don't have help to get it fixed. We have set up um, ways for you to get help but 11:30 at night on a Thursday night is not one of those options for help and so if you're gonna take an online class you have to accept that you need to be proactive you need to do your work on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday of the week 
instead of waiting until Saturday at midnight to try to do it because I won't be online at 10 o'clock on Saturday if something goes wrong. But if something went wrong on Wednesday, you could shoot me an email or come to my next office hour and I can help you in real time. There are two links that I would like you to read. There's a netiquette which just talks about how to avoid misunderstandings in communication in an online class. And then there is a link to a manual for success when taking online classes. It's really long, but I think it's really good. So I would bookmark it if you plan to take a lot of online classes. It has tips for success and things like that. I've outlined four sections, so it's really long. There might be like 20 sections on the page, and it could take you hours to read. I've outlined outlined four sections I think I find the most helpful. And so if you're going to read that page, read those four first. Um, I really like it. I'm someone who takes a lot of online classes and teaches a lot of online classes, and they're they're always updating it. I'm constantly learning new things, or I'm, I'm looking at things in a different way with a better understanding of how I may interpret things one way, but a student might interpret it another. And so I really like it, so read through that.